You are the God that he left thee. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and heal my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the God that he left thee. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you healed all my disease. Healed all my disease. I remember having chronic asthma. And I remember having issues in my body, diseases in my body. And I remember when the healing power of God went through me and healed all those diseases. And healing is the children's bread. That's what the word of God says. Psalm 107 verse 20 said that he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Matthew chapter four, verse 23 says that Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Psalm chapter 103, verse three says that Jesus, he forgiveth all your iniquities he healeth all your diseases, all, all your diseases. Isaiah 53 verse five says that he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, ye were healed. First Peter chapter two, verse 24 says of his own self, he bore your sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead from sins, we being dead to sins, that we should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Just think about this, First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. It's talking about how the Lord nailed sins and the consequences from sins. Nailed it at the cross. And it says, with his stripes, by whose stripes you were healed. Just think about this. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18 says that the tongue of the wise is health. The tongue of the wise is health. The tongue of the wise is health. Just think about this. Isaiah 59, verse 1 says that his arm is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. It means the Lord listens to your prayers. He listens to your prayers. He answers. One thing that is so powerful is that the stripes of Jesus is listed as a PowerPoint in the spirit world. It's a documented healing river. The stripes of Jesus is a documented healing river. So, when the stripes of Jesus was documented, everybody received a classification for healing. Now, healing is different from health because healing is the process of recovery. But health is where you're living out of that recovered state. So healing is the process. It is the process of the recovery. But health is the established place where there is no defects, where the healing is finalized, where you're living out of that place of being restored. One thing that you have to always remember is that whenever something goes wrong, in the physical body or something is wrong in the physical body, 
It is the Holy Spirit pulling on your faith. The Holy Spirit allows things to go on in the believer's life, whether you get a cold in your body, whether you get a, a diagnosis. Patty got a diagnosis of cancer in my ministry. She wrote me a whole paragraph talking about the cancer, and I told her, you are healed. I used three words, you are healed. And she was healed from that cancer. And years later, she's still healed from that chronic cancer, that, that stage cancer that came to kill her. She's healed and she follows me. She comes to the conference. She sows money to me. She prays for me every day. So Patty at this point in life, you know, um, Patty at this point in life, she has used the healing to serve and to sow and to submit and to surrender. And she prays for me every single day. Just think about it. She prays for me every single day. She don't miss a day. She prays for me every day. There are some of you all never had cancer. You don't pray for me every day. But I could count on Patty at this point. I know some of y'all pray for me every day, but I'm just saying. I'm saying like she's, she's making steps to utilize the miraculous healing that she experienced in the body because cancer is a strong man demon. Cancer is a strong man demon. If anybody gets cancer, is a strong man demon. So when you get healed from cancer, it requires a strong, um, a strong dimension of the Holy Ghost to deal with that strong man demon. So um, Patty is completely healed. She even went back to get tested again and the doctor can't find it. This was recently, I think this year. So that was years ago. I think that was 2019 or 2020 or uh, 2000. Yeah, around that time, probably way back then. So just think about it. She got healed because I sent the word. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent the word and he healed them and delivered them from their destruction. You have the power to release healing from your own mouth into your own body. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. It says, there is that, that, um, that speaketh like piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. Proverbs 12, 18. Your tongue is health. Your tongue is health. Your tongue is health. Speak your health even though you don't feel sick. Speak your health even though you don't have diseases. The tongue is health. The tongue is health. And I'm telling you that if you ever experience anything in your body, it is a test of the Holy Ghost if you're going to use your faith. The Holy Spirit is addicted to faith. The Holy Spirit is addicted to faith. Hebrews 11, 6, without faith is impossible to please God. If he don't see faith, you can't touch him. That's the only region where God is located, faith. Bible says in the gospels, when the son of man return, will he find faith on the earth? Faith, the Bible say in the book of James, without works is dead. There's always gonna be opportunity to use the works of your faith. You can miss it, resist it, or assist it. You can diss it, kiss it, or miss it. It's up to you. Your reaction to opportunities of faith, you can get frustrated, angry, upset. You can get bitter. You can become vicious. You can become hateful, strife, proud, wicked. But opportunities of faith, James 1-2, the trying of your faith, the trying of your faith, the trying of your faith. God tries your faith. James 1, 2 tell you that he's going to try your faith. He's going to try you out. He's going to see. Let you see where is your faith. Remember, Jesus went to sleep in the boat. Jesus already knows that the storm is coming. Imagine being with Jesus and storms still come to your life. 
There's people today that believe if a storm comes, that means Jesus not there. There's people today that believe if a storm comes, that means that Jesus didn't tell me to do it. This is why many people fall away from God. Because after Jesus tells you to do it, things go left. After Jesus tells you to do it, you lose something. Something dies. Something becomes chaotic. And then you say, oh, it wasn't Jesus, it was the devil. Stupid. The Holy Ghost tests his man to see where's your faith? Is it in me? Or it is it the natural world? Is it in the flesh? Bible said no good thing dwelleth in the flesh. Is your faith in me and the power of God? Remember what Apostle Paul said that my faith does not stand in the wisdom of men. It stands in the power of God in the book of Corinthians, I believe. Corinthians. My faith stands in the power of God. The Holy Spirit creates situations in everybody's life because he's addicted to faith. And I'm telling you that he'll, he'll even allow situations in your physical body. I remember having times where it's like the enemy want to oppress you. You know, oppression is where Satan gives you thoughts against God. If you take a note, write that down. Oppression is where Satan stirs up your bitterness towards God. Oppressed people are stressed people. Don't let oppression sit on you. Don't let oppression sit on you. That's why Isaiah 61 verse 3 is so powerful. The garment of praise for what? The spirit of heaviness. Oppression is the spirit of heaviness. You praise. Praise is the recollection of the greatness of God. Outside of praise, you can't remember. You Outside of praise, you can't remember. You can't remember God's greatness and you can't remember his power. You can't remember his wisdom. You can't remember his strength. You can't remember his economy outside of praise. Praise reminds you. That's why Joshua had to walk around. They had to praise around the walls of Jericho. They need to remember that our God is Jehovah. Our God is healer. Our God is deliverer. Our God is mighty. Our God is a mountain mover. He is a storm destroying God. They have to remember, but they remember through praise. When you praise God, you remember the fouls of his abilities, the fouls of his ministries, the fouls of his power and his medicines. The Holy Ghost is the medicine for everybody's body. He has the wisdom. Now, I want to tell you something. Healing, when we deal with the healing anointing, you have to remember that the stripes of Jesus purchased your healing. Purchase your healing. The stripes of Jesus. The stripes of Jesus purchase your healing. He purchased the transaction of your blood being restored, your bones being restored, your body being restored. If you would shut up the flesh about your body and you would open up your soul to what the spirit is saying about your body, you will know that all things will manifest in your body in this life. You don't got to wait for a new glorified body. In this life, healing has been purchased. In this life, healing has been established. There's new body parts. There's creative miracles. There's signs and wonders. There's apostolic power reserved by the Holy Ghost for whosoever would believe. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 23, when it said that Jesus, he went about all Galilee. He was preaching 
the gospel of the kingdom. He was teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What is the gospel of the kingdom? The gospel of the kingdom is the good news about results. It is the good news about harvests. It's the good news about rewards. It's good news about deliverance. It's good news about freedom. It's good news about money. It's good news about healing. The gospel of the kingdom is the good news. It is the good report. It's good tidings. It is a joyful result that everything that's destroyed will be repaired. Everything that's broken will be mended. Everything that's sick will be healed. Everything that's poor will be made rich. Everything that is, is lacking will have abundance. Everything that's confused will have wisdom. Everything that's dark will be enlightened. Everything that is underneath will be lifted up. It'll be exalted. That's the good news. And what happened in Matthew chapter four, verse 23, Jesus went around, started telling people why, because he's dealing with their soul. Remember what Psalm 103 verse three say, he forgiveth all your iniquities. So the iniquities are things that go on in your soul. So when the Bible said that he forgiveth your iniquities, it means that he deals with that part of your soul that is unrenewed, that is burdened down with sin, burdened down with iniquity, burdened down with wrong deeds, wrong thoughts, wrong ways, and he forgives that. Why? So that your faith can work. What is the purpose of God forgiving iniquities? The healing comes through the soul that is at peace with God. Your soul got to be at peace with God for you to receive peace in your health. Many people, their soul is not at peace with God. You know why? Because you're looking at the bones. You're looking at the blood condition. You're looking at your body. That's where your focus is. You're not focusing on Jesus. You're not focusing on the healer. You're not focusing on the one that heals all the diseases. You're not focusing on the one that heals all manner of sickness. You're focusing on the body. People get so tied up in their health condition. That's what you're studying. You have to study Jesus to destroy every disease in your body. If you focus on Jesus, it'll happen. The Bible say, I think that's Philippians 4 verse 6 and all. I think it say that be not anxious for nothing. But in all things with prayer and thanksgiving, make your requests known unto God. With prayers and supplications, with thanksgiving, just think about this. The Bible said, don't just come and pray. Don't just come and, and give supplication, but give thanks. Here we go back to praise. Here we go back to praise. See, many people get so tied up in what they want from God. You're studying on what you want from God. Study on the God of your wants. He already got it. Healing power, he got it. Healing power, he got it. Oh my goodness. Healing power, Healing power, he got it. And I'm telling, I'm telling you right now, I release healing power on this broadcast. Healing power from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. With his stripes, you are healed. Let me read it again. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Of his own body, of his own self, he bore your sins in his own body on the tree that you being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. You were healed by his stripes. You were healed by his stripes. You are healed. Isaiah 53 verse 5, you were wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities, chastisement of your peace was upon him, and with his stripes, you were healed. Isaiah 53 verse 5 is revealing to you the healing covenant. Psalm 103 verse 3, he heals all your diseases. Then we go to uh, Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. It says that Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness. And then watch this here. Sickness and diseases are different. When you got a cold, you sick. It, it, it's a disease uh, because it, 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 it disrespects your ease. That's what a disease is. It, it, it disses your ease. 
It causes discomfort to whatever uh, causes you to be at ease. It, it, uh, it, a disease, it is an attack against your comfort. So we can find that every sickness being a disease. All right. But when we deal with diseases, there are some diseases that necessarily is not making you sick mentally. Like there's people that got diseases, but they still, they still can have joy. They still don't have depression. A disease and a sickness, uh, we deal with colds, but diseases, we got diseases that come from heart. We got diseases that come from the brain, headaches. We got uh, migraines. We got diseases that come from the blood. We got sexual diseases. We have diseases that are, are, are sexually transmitted. We have diseases that are um, in the lungs. Uh, I talked to you about asthma. That, that was a disease that I had and a sickness that I had. But just think about it. Things that are in the bracket of diseases and things that are in the bracket of sickness. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, Jesus healed all manner of sickness, all manner of diseases. That means if the sickness was in the lungs, if it was in the body, if it was in the mind, if it was in the feet, if it was in the toes, if it was in the fingers. Then when we deal with diseases, if it was in the mind, if it was in the body, if it was in the arms, if it was in the legs, if it was anywhere, wherever the diseases was, he healed all of them. This should make a child of God rest in the finished power of God. Because there's nothing that you have that's not going to be taken away from you. There's nothing that you have that he's not going to take away from you. And I'm going to tell you something about healing. Healing requires patience because during the process, the Lord, like a doctor, is weighing out your spirit. He's weighing out your spirit. Yeah. He's weighing out your spirit. Um. One time I saw somebody in a wheelchair and I was somewhere and um, as I was staring at them, I looked at them in the wheelchair. And this is one thing that I recognize. They had a caretaker and they was very mean. They was disrespectful. They was angry. And, and I looked down and, and then the Holy Spirit started telling me their real cripple place is their soul. People look at this person and see that them cripple. They cripple according to their physical body, but they're really crippled in their soul. That's where they can't walk. They can't walk into joy. They can't walk into peace. They can't walk into kindness. They can't walk into generosity. They can't walk into patience because they are maimed. They are they are lame in their soul. They can't walk. That's where it's at. They have the real infirmity in their soul. So um, I understood because in Hebrews chapter 11, verse three, it says through faith, we understand. So faith brings understanding. When Proverbs chapter four says, get wisdom, get understanding. You get understanding through faith. And that's why Apostle Paul was saying in Ephesians, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the knowledge of Christ. You, I said, you get understanding through faith. If your faith does, if your faith doesn't work, your understanding never comes. Comprehension comes through faith. That's why the Bible said in Romans, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Is that Romans chapter 12? Probably. Probably Romans chapter 12. But remember, you can't be conformed to the world. Because what happens when you conform to the world? The word of God say that the natural man understandeth not the things of the spirit. Nor could he perceive them because he's spiritually discerned. He can't understand them because he's spiritually, spiritually discerned, which means that he's crippled in his soul. His soul is crippled. Just think about this. Just think about this. Just think about this. The power of God, when, you, when you're going through healing, it works gradually. A miracle works Instantly and spreads throughout your body. Healing works gradually. And while God is healing you, he's looking at the temperature of your soul. 
I think that's first John chapter four that said that perfect love casteth out fear. It says that fear has torment. It said he that fear it has not been made perfect in love. So you understand uh, that fear is a device that Satan uses to stop healing. Fear is a device that Satan uses to stop the gospel of the kingdom. Whenever fear happens, understand that fear is a magnet. Whatever you fear is going to happen to you. That's why a child of God should never fear. Because fear is a magnet just like faith. That's why Satan uses fear to magnetize to people destruction. Remember what Job says, that which I feared has come upon me. That which I feared has come upon me. Fear carries meditation. Fear carries pictures, just like faith. So when you fear, you operate in a satanic magnet for destruction. When you have faith, it's a divine magnet for miracles, for signs, for wonders, for deliverances, for prosperity, for blessing. So fear is Satan's faith. Fear is Satan's faith. And whenever fear is present, Satan does miracles. Yeah, yeah, you don't believe it. Look at the book of Revelation. It said that the Antichrist will come with lying wonders and miracles and signs. Just think about it. Satan has a department of miracles for people that operate in fear. That's why if somebody fear getting into a car accident, they get into a car accident. If they fear cancer, they get cancer. If they fear uh, being kicked out of places, they get kicked out of places. Because fear is a magnet. It's a magnet that Satan built. It's a counterfeit that works just like faith. And that's why the Bible said that now faith is the substance of things hoped for. I think that's how Hebrews chapter 11 also. Uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Okay, is the, is the, is a substance of things hoped for. Well, faith is a substance. Faith is a substance. Well, fear is a substance. So Satan copied uh, faith in its rhythm, in its algorithm, and how it functions and how it, how it flows to cause man to inherit their own destruction. Don't let yourself get in fear. Don't let yourself get in fear. Because remember what I'm telling you. Fear magnetizes destructive events. All right. Healing power of God. Healing power of God. Healing power of God will be your portion both now and forevermore. Every disease is going to be healed. Every sickness is going to be healed. I release the healing power of God upon you. Lord, you are the God that here left me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word, Psalm 107, and you healed my disease, healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the God, rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Let faith arise in your soul. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Oh, he will touch you and he'll make you hold. Oh, he will touch you and he'll make you whole. Some of y'all, look, I done preached this whole thing. Some of y'all right now, you sweating all right here. Look at me. It's just a little jokey joke. See, some of y'all right now, if you was on this line, all this would be sweating. Look, I'm showing you my shirt. I got on gray, man. Some of y'all need to be healed from sweat glands. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Say that a merry heart doeth good. Doeth good. Like a medicine. So God heals people when you have a joyful heart. Joy is evidence of faith and hope. 
Joy is evidence of faith and hope. See, I didn't teach a whole sermon. How long I've been on here? Some of y'all, you ain't even doing nothing and you sweating. You up there listening to me sweating. Huh? Why are you sweating, baby? I'm the one doing all the teaching and the preaching. I was hollering on here. Watch the replay. I was hollering and squalling and, 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 and scholaring in and, and here. I was hollering and squalling and, 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 and scholaring in and, and, and here. Huh? You up there sweating more than me. Why is that? I should have sweat all over my arms. You see, and people, you, I saw a man the other day. He was sitting down sweating. I'm like, how you, how you ain't moving, you sweating? Just think about it. Why is he sweating and he ain't doing nothing? Sometimes you need healing from sweat glands. <laughs> sweat gland healing. Saints, I'm telling you, Satan is after every man's soul. And just understand, whenever you feel fear, whenever you feel worry, whenever you feel um, anything, remember Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. It says, cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience. Verse 36, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Healing is a promise. Wait on the Lord. Calm down. Saints, it is so funny that if anything goes wrong in your body, anything goes in your wrong, uh, wrong in your finances, look at how you panic. You got to get to the point that when you hear that Lazarus dead, you don't move. You wait on the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost say, wait four days. You wait four days. The sisters of Lazarus was tested through Lazarus' death and they failed the test. They failed it. They failed the test. As long as Jesus did not let that thing happen in Lazarus' life, they was up there. Oh, I believe. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. You're lying. I'm telling you that the Holy Ghost of God, he, this man, the Holy Ghost of God, he is so smart in preparing you for your greatness. He won't let you live a deceived life. Remember what James chapter one says, you could be a deceiver of yourself. Huh? Huh? But, but, but there is a river that John chapter seven say that out of your belly and he that believeth on him. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's talking about if you believe on Jesus, if you truly believe on Jesus, the belly is going to flow rivers of living water. I'm telling you right now, this life, don't, don't, don't condemn yourself. Romans chapter eight, verse one says there now no condemnation to those that walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. There's no condemnation. Don't condemn yourself. But this word is to quicken you. You got to take a hold of your soul because there's going to be things that pop up in the body, in the finances, all throughout your life, in relationships all throughout your life. And you have to already be prepared to stand strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You got to be ready to gird up the loins of your mind. Like Peter says, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. You got to be ready. You got to be ready. Because things are going to pop up and you can't lose your confidence. You can't lose your strength. You can't lose your expectation. And then the promise will come. You will get the healing manifested in physical form. You'll get the finances manifested in physical form. You'll get the prayer and the petition and the supplication you made unto God. What does Matthew say? Matthew says that every man that acts, receive. I think that's Matthew 7. I may be wrong. Every man that acts, receive. Every man that seeks, finds. And everyone that knocks, the door shall be opened unto him. That's what I said. Everyone that acts, is receives. Everyone that seeks, finds. Everyone that knocks, the door shall be opened unto him. That's what the word of God says. Yeah, that's Matthew 7, 8. Matthew 7, 8 says, everyone that acts. Huh? You see, some of y'all, if you lift up your arm, it's all wet right here. Look at it. Matthew 7, 8 says, every man that acts, 
he receives. Every man that seeks, he finds. Every man that knocks, the door is open unto him. Matthew chapter 7, verse uh, 8. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Um, it says, take no thought for your life. Take no thought for your life. Take no thought for your life. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. And let faith go to work. You start with praise, remember? The garment of praise. Isaiah 61, 3. You got to praise. All right? This is what goes on in the soul to heal the soul. You got to learn to praise. Praise. Praise and praise until anxiety goes. Remember what I'm telling you. Praise will evict anxiety. Praise evicts anxiety. Let anxiety go. Rest in the Lord. That's what Hebrews chapter 4 tells us. That there remaineth a rest. You got to be diligent to enter into this rest. It's going to be okay. And just remember... Every situation that pops up, whether it be disease, sickness, or anything, it is an opportunity where the Holy Spirit is pulling on your faith. He wants you to use your faith. I'm going to tell you like this here, and I want you to hear me. The Holy Spirit wants you to use your faith so much that he does let the devil attack your body. He does let the devil attack your finances because he wants you to use your faith. He wants that faith to be active. He wants your faith employed. He wants your faith to have a job. He wants your faith to be working hard. I'm telling you, you got to understand the Lord. Isaiah 55 verse 8, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither is your ways my ways. It is a way that God operates. He will let the devil attack you mentally, physically, because he wants you to fight the good fight of what? Faith. He wants you to fight the good fight of faith. And you can't fight the good fight of faith if somebody is not opposing your comfort and opposing your stability and if you're not being opposed in your confidence. If you are not experiencing that resistance, what, what what's going to happen? Uh, what, 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 what the Bible say in James chapter one, verse two, count my brethren, count it all joy, count it all joy, count it all joy. When you fall into divers temptation, that means that the devil is attacking you. Remember what James say that God does not tempt any man with evil because God himself is not tempted by evil, nor does he tempt any man. So what the word of God tells you that when you're tempted, that's not the realm of God. That's the realm of the devil. So if the Bible says in James chapter one, verse two, my brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptation, that means that this is the region where Satan is sent to attack you. And Jesus is letting it happen. The Holy Spirit has permitted it. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is addicted to faith. He wants to see faith coming out of you. And faith comes out the most when Satan thinks that Satan can boast. I want you to remember what I'm telling you. Faith comes out the most when Satan thinks that Satan can boast. That means that Satan is using something as a device to say, hey, I got the upper hand on you. I got it. And now I'm on top. And that's when the faith is pit under pressure and the faith produces the most. But I'm telling you right now, you are healed. Receive your healing right now. Father, I praise you right now for everybody in JHM, for everybody that's watching me, for everybody that's looking at this broadcast right now. And I speak unto you healing. I release the healing power of the Lord into your body. But not only that, I release the healing power of the Lord into your soul. And I speak the glory light of the power of the gospel into your body right now. I speak the gospel of the kingdom into your body and I say that you are healed. You are healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Healing angels of the kingdom of heaven are dispatched right now to minister to your body and minister to your, your, your soul right now. I release new oil and new wine of the Holy Ghost into your being and I decree and I declare health wholeness and prosperity. What third John? I think that's chapter one, verse two or third John is in third John. 
I wish above all things that you prosper. And then what? You be in health. You be in health. Don't forget Psalm 103 verse 3. He heals all your diseases, not some. Don't look at certain things right now and say, well, I just got to keep this bone disease till I get to heaven. I just got to keep this blood condition till I get to heaven. No way. The healing power of God drives out every blood condition. The healing power of God drives out every blood condition in your body right now. The healing power of God drives out every, every, every issue in your bones. The healing power of God drives out every sickness right now. Every health diagnosis is destroyed and abolished by the blood of Jesus, by the stripes of Jesus. Remember 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. It said that by, by his stripes you were healed. Isaiah 53, verse 5, it said again, by his stripes, with his stripes, you were healed. Remember, all the healing that's available to you is now flowing. And I touch and I agree with you. And now praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for your healing. Praise the Lord for your health. Praise the Lord. Remember Proverbs 12, 18. The tongue of the wise is health. Let your tongue start speaking your health. Let your tongue start declaring your health and rejoice. And then those of you all receiving soul healing right now, receive soul healing and rejoice that you are healed from anxiety. You're healed from anxiety. You're healed from anxiety. Anxiety, and you say, well, what about fear and all that other stuff? Satan uses anxiety to keep you in fear. Satan uses anxiety to keep you in worry. Satan, you, because if you notice, what is the driving force of worry and fear and stress? Anxiety. You're becoming anxious. You are being healed from anxiety right now. The yoke destroying power of the spirit of God is restoring your health right now. Hallelujah. 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 Say, I receive my healing in my spirit, soul, and body by the stripes of Jesus, with the stripes of Jesus. I receive my healing. I receive my healing. I receive my healing. And the blood of Jesus makes my blood completely clean and pure and restored. The blood of Jesus makes my mind completely pure and clean and wholesome. 